Hello friends, good morning, welcome back, welcome to a new video. Today I have a few things that I want to share with you guys, some DIY home decor. I have a recipe and we're gonna also take a little trip over to a plant nursery. So I'm hoping to find some more milkweed for the monarch butterflies. The seeds that I planted, unfortunately, I think it's been like two weeks now and none of them have come up, so I don't know. I think they should have probably, something should have happened by now. So we did kind of have a lot of rain after and the it was kind of flooding a little bit in that area. So I'm thinking that they might have kind of just got washed away or like um, soaked and maybe they're just not gonna sprout or work. I don't know, but I'm thinking if I can find some at the plant nursery, that would be nice to get. I also wanna do a vegan scallop recipe later, which is very interesting. I made it before and it came out really good. I also have some West Elm inspired home decor to share with you guys. So these are some Dollar Tree DIYs of a planter, lantern, and also a vase, like a floral thing for propagating some of our plants, which I love to do, especially my pothos plant. They're just so easy to propagate. So let's go ahead and get started with our day. Show me what it's like to be circling among the clouds Because without you by my side I would be stuck here on the ground you're lighting up the way I can see the road ahead of me I won't be stumbling in the dark Your eyes are shining like the stars I was down Until you saved me Until you set me free My eyes were closed Now I see clear as day And I just wanted to say That you can take me high Okay, let's go ahead and jump right in with our first West Elm inspired DIY. These are gonna be Dollar Tree DIYs for the most part. You are gonna need two of these um, five, I think they're five and a half inch square pieces from the Dollar Tree. You'll also wanna get some of the wooden dowels, which I know Dollar Tree used to carry and I still have a bunch of them. So let me know if you guys still see them in the Dollar Tree or not, but if not, check Walmart. I am showing you guys four of them here. You're gonna actually need eight of these. Um, for the larger one and then I think four of them more for the small one. The first thing I wanted to do was kind of give these a little bit of a wood stain so this is totally optional but I took a little bit of some antique wax here and mixed it with a little bit of water and just kind of brushed that on and made kind of like my own light wood stain color here. I love how it turns out it's just like a light medium neutral brown. Now we're gonna need some plastic cutting board sheets and I have seen that Dollar Tree carries these as a two pack for $1.25. So if you can find them, definitely pick them up in Dollar Tree. But I went to two different Dollar Trees near me and they did not have them in stock. And I really wanted to make this to share it with you guys. So I ordered a larger package of them on Amazon and I was able to just get it um, a free shipping. It came in like the next day and it's perfect. I actually, my mother-in-law wanted some of these for the kitchen. So I'm giving her some for the kitchen. Plus I have extra for more crafts in the future. So it just worked out better. You're gonna to want to cut these into 12 inch long rectangles and then measure how wide your wooden square is and then basically cut the plastic sheet to be a half an inch smaller. So you basically want to give yourself a quarter inch of space on either side because we're gonna need this to fit a little bit in, um, not right out on the very edge. So if your wooden square is five and a half inches wide, go ahead and just make your plastic sheet be five inches. You wanna just shorten it up by a half an inch on the width, make it 12 inches tall, the same the same height that those wooden dowels are gonna be. I actually used a paper cutter. You could do this with scissors, but I just felt like it gave a much cleaner, straighter line, and it was just a lot neater to do this way. Now, for the larger lantern, I needed 
two cutting boards and then for the smaller one I just needed one of them. I feel like this craft is a little bit trickier to explain so bear with me here but now I'm adding some high heat hot glue and this smaller glue gun worked so well to keep the glue gun lines like to keep the glue very neat and not have extra glue just kind of going everywhere but it is a high heat glue gun so it worked out really nicely to just help that plastic really adhere onto the wood. I pressed it together tightly. So take your two wooden dowels and we're basically gluing them at, at either end of the, the long sides of these plastic sheets that we cut out. Hopefully you're able to see what I'm doing and this all makes sense for you, but we're making four sets. So you'll have four pieces of plastic, one for each side of the lantern, and then you should have kind of like a wooden dowel on each end of those plastic sheets and like I said hopefully that all makes sense I did use wood glue on the bottom of each of the wooden dowels where I glue it on to the wooden square and then I went along with hot glue kind of on the inside portion of the plastic sheet so that that would also just kind of seal it in and line it up clean and neat and help hold it in place while the wood glue on the wooden dowel part is drying the hot glue along the inside portion of that plastic cutting board mat it will just help it stay in place there because the glue the hot glue will dry much faster than the wood glue would have and then also as you add your other sides in you can go down the inside corner and where those two wooden dowels are coming you know side to side coming up against each other you can go ahead and run down that seam in there on the inside with a little bit of hot glue um, at least until you get to the last piece when you get to the last piece you probably won't be able to fit your hand and glue gun down in there and all that but at least on the first view just to kind of give it a really good seal and help hold everything together nice and tight and then for the top don't glue your top piece on we're just going to set ours on it's not going to be like a, a true lantern in that sense i guess but what i really like about it is the fact that you can obviously only use led candles in here but it's very going to be very easy to lift the lid up to take out your candle and change the batteries on your battery operated led candle again do not use real candles in here do not this is for fake candles only so i'm gonna link some of my favorite battery led battery candles down below in the description box i get them on amazon but um dollar tree does carry uh some battery candles as well i wanted to kind of add the little top accent and i just glued together four of the wooden jenga block pieces and then i stained them and glued them on top of the lantern and it's perfect because it gives you something to grab to easily lift off your lantern top change the batteries or put in your battery candles or whatever you want to do turn them on set them on timers if you want and then just kind of set the lid back on the top it's just beautiful piece of decor and it's going to look really great for any season so i think this west elm diy turned out really nice for all in all really costing me maybe around the five dollar mark for the next one we're going to do a little bit of a planter DIY and I'm taking um, three of these wreath forms I would actually recommend you guys just use two I glued three of them together and then ended up kind of regretting it and it was too late they're very tightly stuck together with the hot glue I had pressed them together so well this glue gun I'm using is also high heat so when you press the styrofoam together like it really adhered nice and strong and it was just too difficult to take it apart and just have two but I'm taking one of these plastic buckets I think it's technically a trash pail from Dollar Tree and I just pressed those wreath forms all the way up added some white paint on here and then I also took some dirt from outside so we've got like a very sandy soil here and I wanted to kind of rub that on and give it some texture now actually the sand was kind of wet because we had had some rain last night so unfortunately it went on and it made this planter look instead of looking like sandy and gritty and giving it texture I feel like it actually mixed with the paint a little bit and it almost gave it more of a gray look like cement or concrete 
which ended up being really interesting. It wasn't quite the original look I was going for. If you want more of that gritty, um, textured look, you might want to actually just pick up a bag of the white sand that Dollar Tree carries, and then you could mix that and add it on top of your paint and really get more of like a, a textured grit to the paint and it will give you some texture to your planter, but you could always go outside like I did, just get some soil or even some beach sand would work and you could mix that in and just give yourself a nice, interesting color and design here and then go ahead and seal it with some Mod Podge, especially if you wanna use this out on like your deck or your patio. I do recommend using it in a covered place um, just cause I don't think it's like completely waterproof sealed, but in case you're worried about it getting a little bit damp outside, just do your best to seal it with like the dishwasher safe Mod Podge. And if you want it to drain, you can drill some drainage holes in the bottom. This one cost me again, just about the $5 mark to make this DIY as well. Now, one more West Elm DIY. For this next one, I'm taking four of those blocks and glue the two of them together on each side, and those are going to be the sides for this planter. And then for the base, we're gonna go ahead and make it out of the Tumbling Tower game blocks. So I glued six across in a row, and then two more stacked up um, side by side underneath and tried to give myself kind of like a, a square base here. Basically, you want the base to be large enough to fit one of the glass vases from Dollar Tree using 10 wooden Jenga blocks. Go ahead and glue your two sets of the wooden rectangles onto the sides of them and they, you know, create these two vertical pieces and now we're going to connect those at the top by adding two more wooden Jenga blocks glued end to end and those will fit perfectly in between, glue them together and they just add a nice decorative accent. I would recommend using like a dot of wood glue and then below it add a dot of hot glue. That way you get some of each and the hot glue will give you that instant hold which is going to just hold everything in place while you give it a day or so for the wood glue to really cure. And I think this is the perfect thing for adding in pretty flowers, but my favorite thing to do is to cut clippings from pothos plants, as well as my lemon lime maranta, or otherwise known as a prayer plant can also cut the pieces off of these and they will create roots and then you'll be able to, once they root in the water, you can take them and plant them in new pots and propagate your plants this way. I love to do this. I think mine turned out looking really nice compared to the West Elm one as well, all for um, just a about how much did we spend? Roughly again around five dollars ish or so uh, to make this one. Maybe six dollars with the glass vase but if you've already got a glass cup or something you could use that. Let me know down below in the comments what do you guys think of these? What are your thoughts on these West Elm home decor DIYs? I just got to the plant nursery and so excited to go look around what they have. Driving in, they have tons of stuff. It looks so beautiful. So whether or not I find the actual milkweed here, I am excited to go just look at some beautiful plants. This plant is called a Tibushina mouse ears, but the leaves are like a soft, almost like a furry velvet. So cool.
back from Walmart and I've got my grocery order here. There were a few items that they needed to still ship. So um, I'll just show you guys quick what I got here. <laughs> I did get two things of vinegar here. The price was different. This one was, was actually cheaper than the Walmart one. Last time when I had gotten some distilled white vinegar, there was like floating things in it and it was weird, but I use it for my laundry and cleaning. So I wanted to get that. I've got some recipes that I'm using my pomegranate and peach and orange juices for. I actually really enjoy mixing this one with kombucha. And then we just, I, I did get the, most of these are for some recipes that I'm gonna be doing. So I got oats just cause I wanted to do some cookies. Oh, you guys can see I'm filming some craft stuff back there this morning. Um, we we're out of honey. So I don't use much honey, but sometimes Kylie has peanut butter and honey, or if someone has a sore throat, they'll put this in their tea. Um, this is for a recipe. Carrots, if you can get like a five pound bag, it is definitely seems to be the cheapest way to get them. And Walmart overall had a pretty good price for yellow onions. So I got some of those and some of our vegetable base here. I use this instead of buying vegetable broth. You just mix this with water. The only thing I was disappointed with um, is apparently I got bleached flour, which I never buy. I added it quickly because I think my mother-in-law ran out of flour. Um, I also ordered gluten-free flour, which I've been using lately, and that one will be coming in the mail. Um, but unfortunately, this is bleached, but oh well, we'll still use it. I just, I never buy bleached. I always get the unbleached one. But they had organic strawberries. Hopefully they look pretty good. I feel like it's hit or miss, you know, sometimes they can be very moldy. <laughs> um, and then I got coconut cream and this is not coconut cream, but I guess they substituted it. So I guess this was all they had. And I didn't like that it had some extra ingredients in here, but I had a little drink recipe. We're gonna try to make something non-alcoholic, something fun to have with the kids. So I just needed to add some coconut in there. Hopefully this will do the trick. And then cilantro because I wanted to make some guacamole and some pad thai. And then the tofu, um, one of them, my mother-in-law is gonna be cooking. And then the other one I'm probably gonna use to make the pad thai. So let's go ahead and make our vegan scallops with a garlic buttery sauce. These came out really delicious. I made them before following a recipe. I believe it was the one from theedgyveg.com. I'm going to put the link for that recipe down below in case you want the exact recipe. I have two containers of the king oyster mushrooms and I slice them a little bit thinner, um, maybe about a half, quarter to half inch thick. They recommend like one inch thick. I think, but it just depends like how quickly you want them to cook or, you know, whatever, however thick you like the slices. My family's not like huge mushroom fans, so um, I prefer to slice them up a little bit thinner. Now, the recipe also calls for them to be marinated, and I completely forgot this time. I marinated them last time, but Honestly, I feel like they were easier to sear in the pan and get like a good seared edge on them when you don't marinate them first because they're not as wet. So I did like two to three tablespoons of olive oil along with a few teaspoons of minced garlic. I think I did about three teaspoons of minced or chopped garlic in here. And then put the, I put about half of the, the mushroom pieces in here. So I did like two batches in order to fit them all, but I was able to get like a really good sear on here. I sprinkled a little bit of salt on. I did not use the seaweed kelp granules at all, but it does make a really nice flavored sauce if you want to combine about a cup of vegetable broth with a tablespoon of some white miso and another tablespoon of soy sauce. And then once you get the sear on your mushrooms, you can add the sauce in then. Oh, you'll want to also squeeze some lemon juice in there. I did about a half of a lemon squeezed um, kind of for this whole batch. So uh, this came out really tasty. Like I said, I'm gonna link the, the real recipe that I was kind of working off of down below, but I just wanted to give you an idea of kind of how I adapted it. And honestly, I think it was even better the next day when I ate the leftovers for lunch. Thank you so much for being here. As always, just wishing you a beautiful day and I will see you soon in a new video. Bye.